Hi, I'm Lisa, and this is Threshold in China. Just as Huawei has left the world in a frenzy with its latest device, Chinese scientists are making remarkable breakthroughs on the next generation of semiconductors. A breakthrough in the production of a new 2D material is set to pave the way for the transition to next-generation semiconductors. Chinese scientists have managed to use the new semiconductor material to produce 12-inch wafers. Currently, silicon chips, which are the foundation of our electronic devices, are facing challenges as the device size becomes smaller and smaller. The scientists discovered that as these silicon transistors get thinner, they struggle to control voltage properly. This means that even when the device is not in use, it still consumes electricity, leading into increased energy cost and heat generation. But here is where the breakthrough comes in. The researchers from Peking University and the Songshan Lake Materials Laboratory have succeeded in creating new materials and produced 12-inch wafers using these novel semiconductor materials at a low cost. They focus on developing 2D materials which are incredibly thin, consisting of just a single layer of atoms. In fact, some 2D materials are considered an essential material system for an integrated circuit of 1 nanometer and smaller. They are also recognized by the industry as being capable of continuing or even beyond the Morse law, where the number of transistors in an integrated circuit doubles about every two years. For example, scientists said a transistor built from a single layer of molybdenum disulfide, a typical 2D material, with a thickness of about 1 nanometer, outperformed the one made with the same thickness of silicon many times. These materials possess great semiconductor properties that can potentially solve the issues faced by silicon chips. Although more work is needed to turn them into functional chips, they have the potential to complement silicon chips in the future. However, manufacturing these 2D material wafers wasn't an easy task. There are two obstacles, producing big enough wafers and producing them fast. Over 60% of existing chip market relies on 12-inch wafers. Traditionally, wafers are grown using a method called point-to-face, but as the size of wafer increased, it becomes difficult to distribute the source materials uniformly within the furnace, resulting in lower quality wafers. A Chinese scientist developed a new approach called face-to-face -face feed. They use special materials as elemental source and achieve a consistent and abundant supply of precursors within the furnace. This breakthrough allowed them to produce larger 12-inch wafers, which are commonly used in the industry. To make things even better, the researchers came up with a modular growth strategy that enabled the batch production of these 2D material wafers. Each model contained its own unit supply and allowed for robust individual wafer growth. By stacking these modules together, they were able to produce large 12-inch wafers in batches. Leading semiconductor companies such as TSMC, Intel and Samsung are investing heavily in research and development to explore and optimize the use of these 2D materials alongside silicon-based technologies. China, with the support of the National Nature Science Foundation, is also prioritizing the research and development of these technologies. While some Chinese scientists are making the material even thinner, others are trying to replace the use of silicon altogether. The new candidate is gallium oxide, which the US has tried to ban from China along with other advanced semiconductors, stating national security concerns. Gallium oxide is used in areas such as communications, radar, aerospace, high-speed trains, and electric vehicles. It offers significant performance advantages over other widely used materials in high voltage resistance, smaller size, and less energy consumption in power transmission. However, it has gained a reputation for being quite challenging to process. A team of researchers led by Yang Deren have developed an approach that has yielded impressive results. 
In August, the team produced 4-inch wafers. This is equivalent to the current maximum commercial wafer size. This is a considerable improvement from their previous achievement of 2-inch wafers and made of the previous year. Gallium oxide, unlike other materials, can form single crystals by solidifying from a melt at standard atmospheric pressure. In countries like Japan and the US, a commonly used modeling method requires a significant amount of iridium to make the crucible, which is a container that holds materials during high temperature processes. The crucible acts as a controlled environment where the components, including gallium oxide, are melted and solidified to form the desired structure or crystals. However, the conventional method demands a large quantity of iridium, making it expensive. For instance, a 4-inch gallium oxide crucible would need at least 5 kg of iridium. To put it into perspective, iridium is nearly three times more expensive than gold. Yang's team produces a casting method that significantly reduces iridium usage by 80% and cut down the cost of production. This alternative process is also relatively simple and shorter in duration. Notably, a Beijing-based private firm, MIG Semiconductor Company, successfully produced 4-inch gallium oxide wafers in December 2022. The company is also building China's first integral production line combining crystal growth, processing and performance testing. The construction is expected to be completed by the end of this year. These exciting developments bring us closer to more efficient and cost-effective semiconductor materials based on gallium oxide. We can expect to see a wave of amazing gadgets coming from Chinese brands, even under US sanctions in the future. Huawei's latest phone is just the beginning of what is to come. And that is all for today's Threshold. As always, please let us know if you like this new section on science and technology in China, and we will do more in the future.